continuous self improvement that's our first sun tonight now i like using five pillars if you have ever attended any of my seminars i like attending five pillars the book i use on mentorship has these five pillars mental relational professional financial and health wise so from where i sit self improvement has five major pillars number one is mental are you feeding your mind number two is relational and i'm going to say something that is a bit tough i'm going to mention to the married and then to the sickles this is going to be tough for you but i'm saying with a lot of love and respect if you are married and you are solving the same marriage issues you solved five years ago, ten years ago. You are not growing in your marriage. If you are single and you are listening to me, you are still being played by men. You are going through a relational roller coaster, repeating the same mistakes year in, year out. You are not making progress. People come, they misuse you, they dump you. You are hurting, year in, year out. Then the problem is no longer with the men out there. The problem is you. You are not growing in your relational area. Number three is professional. If you've lost job once, I understand. If you lose the second time and the third time, the problem is no longer your employer. You are the issue. Now let's go to financial. If you have been the same income you had five years ago, if your monthly income is the same as it was two years ago, you're not growing in the area of personal finance. In your personal income, you are retarded. You are not progressing. You are mark timing. You're going through vicious cycles. You're not making progress. You are stuck. And you need to break the stagnation. In your area of health, and I say this is sensitive, please, but I'm speaking with a lot of love. I don't know you. By the way, I can't see any of you. I can't see any of you, so you're in safe space. But if you've been struggling with weight for the last three, four, five years, then there is an issue on your part. You can't sing the same song for three, four, five years. Weight is not about genes. It's about what you eat. You are what you eat. And you have to come to terms with that, that you have lacked the capacity, the strength, the willpower to deal with your weight. So long as you keep blaming your genes, so long as you keep blaming your body, you will never take charge of your weight. I understand if you struggle with weight for six months, but two, three, four years down the line, you can't sing the same, same song. If I was to talk about self-improvement i see it in four stages in my view i see it in four stages the first stage i call it discovery the second stage development the third stage mastery the fourth stage i call it actualization let me get personal and then i draw the ball to you the first stage discovery for me is the day i realized god has called me to be a trainer and a speaker. I tried other things. I need you to understand, I tried other things. I knew God had called me to speak, to train when I was informed too. I knew that when I was in high school. But I digressed a bit and I started mixing two things. I started horticultural exports and I was still speaking those days in high school when I started speaking. You know what? God closed down every tap, every effort I tried in horticultural exports. And I was exporting in five countries. I never succeeded. I sunk in bank loans, huge debts, which I had to clear in seven years. And that's when I realized I have to stick to what God called me to do. And the day I decided this is the only thing I will do for the rest of my life, I was set free. And that's the stage I'm calling discovery, knowing this is my calling, no the same thing we say, like wedding vows, living all others. There are many options on the table. I'm not picking them. There are people who, are, who have to be contractors. Others have to be in electronics. Others have to be programmers. Others have to be actors in theaters. 
and producing movies. Others have to be pilots and doctors and architects. I'm a speaker. Done. Until the day the Lord takes me home. That's discovery. Then the second stage is development. When I say now I know who I am, who do I learn from? Let me learn from Zig Ziglar. Let me learn from Les Brown. Let me learn from John Maxwell. Let me learn from Stacey Bryan. Let me learn from the gurus in my field of expertise. I want to develop myself. That is stage two. Stage three, you don't declare yourself a master. Others notice. And I believe I'm in this stage three. How do you know? It is when corporate organizations like KCB can engage you for training. If you're a computer programmer listening to me, if you're an accountant listening to me, and a corporate organization like KCB or Safaricom or whichever else is engaging you, now you know you have reached a stage called mastery. Why? There is no major corporate organization that will give a chance to an amateur. They will not try with you. As a job, as an employee, yes. But in business, corporates go for anyone they think is also corporate. So when not one corporate, but when you see three, four, five, six, seven corporate organizations engaging you, now you know you're in stage three, mastery. And then finally, stage four of self actualization of, of self improvement is actualization. It is that day when you no longer work money you're just giving back to the society it doesn't mean you don't charge for your services no 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 but it, it does mean you don't have to work you don't have to do it even though you may charge and you may be paid like now i i tried to model after john maxwell he's one of the guys i admire the most in the pastoral field i tried to model after people like joe austin bishop td now, the thing is this, if you look at someone like John Maxwell, he doesn't have to work even for a single day. He doesn't have to. Yes, he still works. He still works. Why? Actualization. This is his moment to give back to the community and also to have a reason to live. Now, you know for sure you are developing yourself and you are moving from one step to another. When you make this statement, the buck stops with me. In the five areas of my life, the buck stops with me. Let me give you one or two examples. Relationships. He did not impregnate me. I got pregnant. He did not divorce me. I divorced. He did not fire me from my job. I lost my job. If you don't reach that level, you will never make progress. Now, I am overweight. Not my genes. Mm -mm -mm. It's about me. I am not eating well. You see, you will never change your weight until you agree the buck stops with you. So if you have someone to blame, you will never make a difference on your weight. So long as you have someone to blame, you will never make a difference on your relationships if you keep saying you are underpaid you will never ever earn more you begin to earn more when you say they are giving me what they think i deserve what they think is the value i'm adding in the company then you are challenging yourself to add value to yourself because then if i add value to myself people will pay me more believe it or not there was a time when I used to speak and people were paying me $30, 3,000 Kenya shillings. When I began speaking in high schools, I would be given $30. And that changed to a day I was paid more than a million for training in a day. Training in a single day, I started earning more than a million training in a single day. But it started by me realizing there is somebody who is paid more than a million. Let me begin the journey and I will get there. I guarantee you, if we finish the session today and there is nothing you're going to do differently, the problem is not you. The problem is me. That's the same thing you must say as a businessman. If people are not coming to buy your product or your service, what is the issue with you or with your products or your processes? So long as you blame the customers, you will never make progress. If you're employed and you can hear my voice, if you ever blame your boss, 
if you ever blame your employer, if you ever blame your company, you will never make progress. If you develop yourself, if your employer doesn't pay you how much you deserve, someone else will see it and poach you. If nobody else has poached you 10 years later, then you're still average. When you are exceptional, when you go the extra mile, you get noticed. We tend to notice someone dressed in white when everyone else is dressed in black. That's how we spot the bride in a wedding. The back stops with me. So this is growth. I won't do it. How can Doc tell me to go knock in 10 doors to sell insurance? I won't do it. I can't do it. I want to do it. How do I do it? That's where change begins. How do I do it? I'll try to do it. Then I can do it. Then I will do it. I told you I write two books every year. There is no guesswork. I have not done the second one. This is the first one this year. So every half a year, I have to do a book. I got you the next half year, I will do another one. I'm not saying I might. People who say they might do nothing. I'm telling you, I will. Others say, mm, what about God's will? Come on, God wants me to do it. Don't blame God's will. We like drawing God for excuses. I'm telling you today, I will do it. The way I have shown you this book, which I'm going to release in the market next week, is the same way I'm telling you of the next book. It will be out before December. It will be out. And if we will have the Ashala Club seminar by November, challenge me. Then I'll come back and tell you, yes, I did it. Yes, I did it. That's what self-improvement means. No excuses. The buck stops with me. No blame games. No blaming my ex. No blaming my husband. No blaming my boss. No blaming my economy. No blaming the president. No blaming corruption. The buck stops with me. I will do it. The second question this morning, why continuous self-improvement? Why should we continually improve ourselves? Think about food. You can't say, look, I'm wasting too much time eating in the morning, lunch hour in the evening, so I'm going to sit down and do 10 loaves and I'm done for the week. I'm going to take 10 burgers, eat and I'm done for the week. You realize that can't work. You just have to eat a small portion, maybe three times a day. The keyword again, when it comes to our meals, daily. That's the keyword. Shawalin is daily. When it comes to our food, daily. Even spiritual food, daily. You can't say I'll wait for Sunday for my next prayers. Can I ask you a very simple question? If a doctor gives you some medicine, and tells you one pill a day, three times a day. One pill a day, morning, lunch, hour, evening. Take for seven days. One pill, three times a day, seven days. You do quick maths. Three times seven equals 21. I'm going to take the 21 pills right now. I have no time taking one pill three times a day. It's a waste of my time. I want to save time. I want to swallow the 21 pills. They're going to sort themselves in my belly. What's going to happen to you if you do that? What's going to happen to you? Overdose. When you overdose, you might end up dying. Self-improvement is a daily commitment the keyword here is daily just like your physical your 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 material food just like showering just like taking medicine for your body to be healthy there are no shortcuts you can't microwave the process it's a daily commitment it's a daily commitment what matters with your growth is every day the problem with most people they underestimate the day so you waste one day without realizing you've wasted a month without realizing you've wasted a year if you're going to make a difference in the five pillars i gave you mental relational professional financial and health it's gonna be daily 
if you decide i'm going to hit the gym i'm going to go a whole day and hit the gym for the sake of the whole week you will never make a difference in your health it is a daily commitment you better exercise 15 minutes every day rather than exercise one day in a month a whole day now sometimes you can do everything i've told you but you don't see results immediately there are times you don't see results immediately so then how why self why continue self improvement if that is the case i want to give you three reasons why you have to continue to improve yourself even when you don't notice results immediately number one you are inspired the truth of the matter is every time you go for a seminar like this you read a good book you listen to a good youtube you are inspired number two we learn new stuff why continuous improvement we learn new stuff and that reason why continuous self improvement we remain focused so when you're continually improving yourself you avoid secondary activities and you stay on tracks you avoid detouring and derailing and you focus on this one thing the apostle paul said this one thing i do as i told you look this one thing i do i'm a speaker i speak in church i speak in the corporate world i speak for ngos i speak for companies that's my job that's who i am i remain focused on that i'm able to say no to any other distraction the question is what do you want with your life because you can be focused if you really do not even know what you want with your life how can we improve ourselves continually that's the next question to ask ourselves number 1 what do you read now now i want to ask you this question on a serious note on a serious note how many listening to me right now are guilty from january to may they have not read one book how many are guilty let us be vulnerable how many can say from january to may as we speak right now i have not read one book i want us to be real many are guilty look at this many are guilty watch this if you ask them why have you not read there was not time but this is a challenge i want to give you guys people normally know the right thing to do but they lack the discipline to do the right thing in most cases the problem is not lack of knowledge in most cases the problem is not knowing what you what you know is not doing what you know Can I ask you another question? This is Friday morning. This is Friday morning. And I want us to be honest with each other. Let's be very real. Let's be real. How many can say from Monday to date, today is Friday, I have not exercised. I have not gone to jog or to walk or to hike. I have not gone out there in the field to exercise. I know I should do, but I haven't done it since Monday. How many can say that? Guilty as charged? How many? Look at that. look at that very many people so the first challenge i give you you are where you are because of what you read number two, what do you watch how much time do you spend on tv on youtube and some people let's be honest i don't want to ask you don't don't answer this one don't answer this one i don't want to embarrass you But there are some girls listening to me here today they actually spend time on the screen on porn I, i i don't want to shame anybody i don't want to embarrass anyone but some of you inbox me in privacy and there are so many girls who are literally wasting their times on porn irrespective of their age some of them are 50 year old some are 40s some are in their 30s it doesn't matter the age But there are so many people rather than picking a good book that can change your life they are literally addicted to porn so you realize the reason you didn't read a book it's because you didn't lack time no it's not because you lacked time it is because you're 
went elsewhere. Your time, Facebook, your time, YouTube, your time, TV, or even socializing with another girl out there. Your time has been taken by everyone else. You have denied yourself time for your self-improvement. So the question remains, what would you watch after today? What would you read after today? And number three, who do you listen? When you're going to work in the morning, when you're going back home from job, before you sleep, who speaks to your life? You will never rise above who you keep listening. And that's the question you have to ask yourself, who speaks into your life?